Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we're going to do two applications in one video. To be as Canadian as possible, we're going to go for a tool for A and that's kind of exactly what we're doing here. We're looking at two products from a company called Two Dimensions. These were both released the end of 2018. The first one is called Flare and the second one is called Nima and we're going to look at them actually in the reverse order of that. Nima is a raster animation system. Flare is a vector animation system but it is getting some of the features from Nima. So I've got an idea that maybe in the future these might become one product. Now the cool thing is here they both use uh, something called open design. So basically the idea is as long as you make all of your work open to the public to see, uh, you can use the tools for completely for free. And now if you want them to be private, there is a cost involved. We'll get back to the pricing in a little bit of time, but everything you're seeing today, you can do completely for free. So first off, let's start things off by looking at NEMA. This is NEMA, and you may have noticed something there. Yes, we are in a browser. This is a browser-based application with all of the pluses and minuses that entails. There is not an offline version, although you could continue to work in the application, you just can't save if your internet connection goes down. So do be aware of that. I know that it's definitely going to turn some people off. Now, if you're familiar at all with any of the cutout animation tools out there, things like um, Spine, Spriter, uh, Dragon Tools, uh, Creature. This is a tool in those veins. This is all about doing raster-based animation. What you do is you come in and you create your model. So you see here, we're seeing all the various different pieces that go together to create this guy. Here are the assets that you use to create them. So for example, if we needed a foot, you bring a foot into the scene and you create it as part of the hierarchy. Now I don't need a foot because this model has already been created for me. And then here you can see the hierarchy of things. So we've got our root. Our root has a bone at the pelvis level. And then we got a body bone a chest bone, a neck bone, a shoulder, and so on. And then attached to them, we have the various different sprites or images that are drawn. If you select something, you'll see the controls for it right here. And here you can see the bones that are influencing that particular piece or sprite. On top, there is a mesh, a polygonal mesh that is controlling the deformations. Uh, we can edit both the weights and the mesh itself. So we can come in here to a mesh editor, have it auto-generated so it'll uh, you know, automatically look at the alpha of the attached image and create the deformation mesh there. But if you wanted more fine detailed control over how things are, um, animated in 2D, like when the bones influence on the mesh, that is done that way. And you can also do it by a painting the weights. And those are the various different bones and how those um, three different bones influence the deformation of this mesh. And that's how you can have multiple bones influencing a single mesh. And you've got the ability again with the weight painting to have it automatically calculated for you. So you only have to get into that if you absolutely need to. Now on top of that, you've also got abilities to do things like create events and custom properties. And those can be exported out through game engine of choice. So for example, if I created an event for the foot um, and I had like footstep, and then when we animate it, which we'll get to in just a second, you can trigger that event and have it in the exported game engine version, have that event fired as part of the walk cycle. So then your code could go, oh, okay, we just stepped. And then you could do you know, the logic. Did I step on a landmine? Do I play the foot sound? And so on kind of logic from your code can be fired off of those events. So this allows you to tie your animation to the underlying um, game engine system if that's what you're going to use. Speaking of which, if you need to export those things out, that is available right down here. So you go to your export and you can export it as a symbol uh, image sequence, which is just basically a texture atlas or a sprite sheet of the thing. So there's no logic there. It's basically a straight out sprite sheet dump, or you can use an exporter. We'll get back to what the export options are in a moment. Otherwise, your tools are very simple. You got your uh, standard transformation, rotation, scaling, and so on. Um, we've got visibility toggles. So if I want to show the bones, I can. If I want to show only bones or outlines, I can. Um, or if I want to show nothing, theoretically, I guess I can. And we'll go back out of there. You've got control over how you uh, align things, world, local, parent. Uh, you've got control over do you have a grid, no grid. You've got uh, rulers if you so wish them. And that is about the, kind of the basics of it. And once you've got your... your um, your object the way you want, it's time to then start animating. So we switch over here to animation mode. And then what you'll see here is we have a single animation called flight that has been defined. If we want to create another animation sequence, we just go ahead and create a new one. And what you've done is over time, you're basically creating keyframes of each different bone. So you basically move your bones around and here I'll go ahead and play it. And you'll see there is your end generated uh, animation as a result. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy to work with. And once again, if you've used something like Spine or Sprite or, um, you know, creature and so on. This is in the same vein. It does a lot of the same stuff. Um, so that is Nima. And this, the entire idea behind Nima is it's raster based. So all of your source images, what you see right here, all of these guys are, are, are rasters, things like PNGs or 
gifts or, or so on. Whereas in Nima, which was, oh, sorry, Flare, Flare is more raster, it's more vector based. Flare is more similar to, um, it reminds me of Expressions Blends greatly, uh, but um, Adobe Flash or, um, uh, I'm trying to think of the other thing, um, it's not coming to me right now, but it's more of a traditional 2D vector based animation system. I'll go ahead and create a new flare. So as you see, as long as I make it in the public, we're good to go. If I'm private, then I need to sign up for a plan. And can, you can choose if you allow people to fork or not. And if you're gonna allow them to fork, you can choose which license they can fork your work under. Now you don't have to allow them to fork. You can allow them to see your work, but not be able to do anything with it and still be under the free license. So go ahead, create a new system. And this is kind of the same deal. Now what's interesting is Flare has got the ability to add raster elements. So now it can do a lot of what NEMA can do for creating those hierarchies. And we'll see that in just a second. But on top of that, you can also come in here and create shapes. So I could come in here and create a rectangle like so. Um, and let's say I was doing a progress bar. We could, we could animate it by basically having, you know, a rectangle within our rectangle and then over time kind of fill them in and you can do those kind of animations, things like progress bars or status bars or UIs or that kind of stuff. Using straight out raster graphics, you can go that way. You also have the ability to use pens. So draw whatever kind of vector shape you want. So I'll close that guy off right there and I'm done editing. And you'll notice here, you've got the ability to say, we could fill it with a set color. Oops, I missed. All right, let's go back to, oops, I do not know what I'm doing. Nice thing is we also have undo, which I am undoing. Uh, done editing, I went into editing mode by accident. All right, so here we go, selected. So we can set it to fill using a color like that, or we can do a stroke outline and we can set the size of our stroke and so on. Let me make that white so you can actually see it. So there, so you can use this to create a, a hierarchy of shapes and then you can animate those shapes and so on. Now what you can also do, as I mentioned earlier on, is a full rector base, uh, rector, uh, um, raster based animation. So I'm gonna come up here. Why are you not, maybe I gotta go into this mode. Translate mode, looks like, one sec. You know, this is one of those things I ran into before. I don't know how to delete things. And if you come in here, you go here, there's actually pretty good help available. So you come down here, there is a manual there, but I do not know how to delete shapes in Nima. I don't even know if I can, uh, or sorry, I guess this is flare I'm in. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new shape to showcase the other thing. So here we are in the same hierarchy. Uh, there's gotta be a way to delete things. I just, it's not delete, it's not backspace, and it's not right click or anything else. So I, I'm actually not sure what it is. But what you see here, these are the assets from the cutout animation demo for um, the Godot game engine. And they're, they're a nice showcase here because uh, they can show how things work. So here's how you would build things out of individual components. So what I could do here then come in and I can find the body and drop the body into the scene. And then somewhere down here, I'll have a hip. And this is how your cutout animation traditionally goes. You, you cut your, um, your sprite up into various different pieces like here. So we got our leg and then we got our lower leg somewhere. Shin. All right, we're dealing with the right side here. So we'll bring that guy in. And then we have the foot somewhere, which is right there. So there, that is how you create. We've just created part of our animation, obviously. I'm not gonna go into a great deal of detail because it just gets really boring to watch me. Now, what you're not gonna want is what I just did. So these are not a uh, hierarchy and I actually want them as a hierarchy. So what we're gonna do is put the hip under the body. We're gonna put the leg under the hip. We're gonna put the shin under the leg. And then we will put the foot under the shin. All right, so now we have the hierarchy we want. So if I grab this guy and move it around, everything goes with it, which is probably what you want. And now what we're gonna do is come back here to our tools right here, and we are going to create a bone. So this is the uh, body bone. Quite often what you do is put a bone right here in the, the middle of the pelvis area, and then you control the various pieces out from it. What I'm gonna do that is a bit in reverse. So I'm gonna create a hierarchy of bones like that. All right, we're good, all right. So there is our bone tree. Now what I'm gonna do is going back over here. So I'm gonna select, oops, I'm still in the bone tool. And do that, I'll go back into translate mode. I'm going to go ahead and select uh, the body here. And you'll notice there is a connected bones option. Now this kind of comes into the same thing where you can have multiple bones influencing things and we can uh, measure the weight on it. I'm not gonna get into those details. What I'm just going to do is set up each bone in the hierarchy. I did it as a very simple one-to-one -one relationship. Uh, so connected bone here. And it's that bone, 
and done. And then finally here, and then connect a bone, and we'll connect that bone and done. Now the workflow between flare and NEMA for this is virtually the same. So what you're seeing here is how you would do it in either cases. The big difference again is being that one is designed for raster animation, has slightly more tools around this stuff and way better exporting options. Whereas this one has uh, the vector based tools. Um, so it's much better for creating UI and so on, but you can do some raster based animations in the mix. And then once again, here we have our timeline. We can have it set to auto loop. We could go ahead and rename this. So we, let's say we want to call this guy. We'll right click and we'll call this guy walk cycle. And I ain't creating a full walk cycle, but we basically got auto keying. So I'm gonna grab this bone. We'll create our first key from that bone right there. Come on. Oh, I screwed something up. So something doesn't have weight. Let me go back here to design, make sure that each bone has, all right. Okay, bone, has a bone, has a bone, has no bone. All right, I screwed that one up. All right, it's connected bones. Uh, what am I in? R right leg. All right. So that bone and done. Yeah, every time I'm okay, gonna make sure this guy has has a bone, has a bone. Okay. So everything has bones. Everything should be controllable now. I'm gonna go ahead and we'll grab that guy. We'll do a slight move. All right. So we just created our first thing. We're gonna advance the timeline to one second, and we'll just move that guy back, and we'll grab the child bone. And yeah. oh, I've got my foot. Oh, I've created a bad hierarchy here, haven't I? Yeah, my bone structure sucks. Doesn't matter, still demonstrates what's going on. And then here we'll go and we'll bring this guy back. Oops, forward, same deal. Stop moving, forward. So, and we'll go ahead and play that. Everyone, there you go. And there is your really simple, crude, and basic animation. And that is kind of the two tools. Now, I'm only kind of showing you the very basics of each tool, but as you can see from work that someone else did with a lot more effort than I put in, you can create some pretty nice results here. And the UI and the way things work is pretty straightforward. Um, you've got tools down here that we're not touching and doing things for special effects and so on. Uh, but that is essentially Flare and Nema. This one being Nema. This one being Flare. And Flare's difference is that it's got those vector-based tools in there. Again, you would often use it for things like progress bars or UIs or that kind of stuff. So let us get into those runtimes I was talking about here. These are the ways that you can export out from Flare and Nema and get full functionality. So this is where you'll get the events and properties and parenting and all that stuff. And this is like a data structure you export out and these are the tools you will use for the end result for running it and getting full integration. So these are kind of plugins for various different systems. For Flare, you have support for Flutter, JS, Framer, Swift, and React. So again, it's highly focused more on UI type work. Uh, in some ways, it becomes more of like a flash replacement. Um, but you can also use some of these guys, like the, the JavaScript runtime. You could use this to integrate it with a um, uh, phaser, for example, or any other 2D HTML5 or um, library out there. And whereas Nema is much more of a competitor to the likes of Spine and Spriter and so on. And you see its runtimes include uh, WebGL, JavaScript runtime, Flutter, Unity, OpenTK, uh, C Sharp, C++ generic runtimes, and a C++ OpenGL runtime. So if you're creating your own game engine in one of those, you've got runtimes available there. Interestingly enough, there is no Unreal Engine runtime. Um, now there is a Godot runtime, but it's not listed here, which is kind of interesting. Um, and of course, all of the runtimes are available. So if you want to update the code and make them yourself, you can head on over. Each one of these has a GitHub lids um, link that you can then go in and access the runtime, all the source code. So you can change things out and see how things work, or you can adapt and create a runtime for your game engine of choice. Um, so as I mentioned earlier on, this guy uses the concept of open design for its pricing. Uh, there's a blog about it. It's on Medium, I'm not gonna link to it. Uh, but you'll see your IP is out there. Uh, you still own it, the license is still yours. Uh, files are all view only unless you allow forking so people can just look at your stuff. It doesn't mean that they can actually do anything with it. Um, but if you don't want the, your work, your design to be viewed by the public, so if you're creating something in secret or you just don't want people to see it, that's where the pricing comes in. And you can get uh, 
plans for $14 a month billed yearly and $21 a month billed monthly. And I believe those give it uh, access to both tools. It just gives you the ability to save privately as opposed to public. So back when we did this create of new, so if I come in here, go to the tools and I create a new something or other, it will, if you've signed up, if you've registered and you're paying that $14 a month, uh, you can turn off the, you can turn it to private and then there you see you have to uh, buy one of their subscription plans to get into this point. So you're looking at uh, build yearly 168 bucks or build monthly, that's what, $220 a year. So there it starts getting pricey when you compare it to the likes of Spriter. Uh, the, the licensing for Creature gets a little interesting. Um, the indie license for uh, Spine would also end up being cheaper, I think. But if you're willing to have your stuff out in the open, this is a hands down a free cheap value because uh, you know everything is um, free. Uh, so it really kind of comes down to the ethos of what you're working with. If the idea of open design works for you, this could be a great tool. It gives you a lot of functionality for absolutely no cost. But if you want to work privately, you've got to pay some money. And I actually kind of like this business model to a certain degree. I'd, I'd like to see more people adopt it. It's rather interesting. And then as a final um, detail, if you are interested in grabbing this, this resource here, this cutout animation sample, this is actually just from the Godot documentation. So at Godot 3.1, you go to the cutout animation documentation um, and you can actually download it here. So you can grab the zip file right there. And as you can see, cutout animation tools are actually built directly into the Godot game as, as well, which is another option that you've got there. So cutout animation is getting more and more common. And we just looked at two tools that are capable of giving you this kind of functionality, that being Flare and that being Nima. And once again, it does seem to me uh, with raster animation being added to Flare, it feels kind of like they're moving down the same road ultimately where they should become one functional program. But right now it seems like Nima is aimed at the traditional game development animation market and Flare is aimed more at the whole uh, vector-based UI progress bars, uh, the traditional flash-based market. Uh, I don't know if they will ultimately end up being the same product in the end, but they're, they're, they're different enough. I understand why two exist, but they're the same enough that I understand that I question why two exist, I guess is how I would put that. Anyways, what do you think? Is, is the whole fact that it runs in a browser a complete turnoff? What do you think of that open design uh, idea or business model that it's completely free as long as you make your stuff publicly viewable? And again, that doesn't mean that it is is um, you know open sourced or anything like that. You still have the, the license to your stuff. You can prevent people from forking it. It just means if you come here and go to their explore category, you will see and be able to interact with work other people have done. So for example, if I wanna check out this guy's work, I can go ahead and click it. And what you're gonna see, if I open this guy up in NEMA like this, I have only read only access because he didn't allow forking. But I can see his work and the end result. I think that's an interesting approach. I can definitely see how it would work really well for some people. And then some other people, it actually could be used as a way to kind of promote your game. So here are the assets we're developing and you can see them as we're developing them. And so if you had a bit of a community behind, it, I can see how that actually could be a strength to you to have it open. Uh, but other times, obviously you want to make things a secret and that won't work for you, in which case you got to open up your wallet. And again, I kind of like this business model, but I'll be interested to hear what you think of it in the comments down below. And I know, again, browser-based is going to turn some of you off right off the hop. But uh, let me know what you thought. Have you used Flare or have you used Nima? And if so, do you have an opinion on either? All right, that's it for now. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.